If it's in the Bible, we want it. If it's not in the Bible, we don't want it. Jesus does not guess about the future. He knows the future. Every day, our faith is tested. Every day, our obedience is tested. Every day, our love for Jesus is tested. But before Jesus comes again, we shall all face the big final test that is coming to the world. The final test is coming to America first. Ready or not, the final test is coming. What does the book of Revelation say is going to happen before the second coming of Jesus Christ? Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test, notice the word test, those who dwell on the earth. That's Revelation 3 and verse 10. I repeat, because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Revelation 3 verse 10. So, that's from the book of Revelation. What does God test us about every day? My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, and let but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. James 1 verses 2 to 4. How does the book of Revelation describe those who are saved? Revelation 14, verse 12 says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So notice how the Bible describes those who are going to be saved at last. They have endurance. They have perseverance, the patience of the saints. They have obedience. They keep the commandments of God. And they have the what? Faith of Jesus, as Revelation 14 Verse 12, one of the most important verses in the book of Revelation. So the big issue, the final test is coming to America and it's about worshiping the Antichrist beast and the image of the beast and receiving the mark of the beast. This is the big issue. Now, Job's faith was severely tested and so the saints in the last days will have their faith severely tested. The book of Revelation is full of mysterious symbols that need to be decoded. The Antichrist beast of Revelation 13 represents the Roman papal power or the Roman church. So the Bible says in Revelation 13 verse 12, and he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast that's the papacy, whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he may even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. In other words, there will be miracles worked to deceive people. So he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. So, he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause or enforce as many as would not worship the image of the beast, so that's false worship that's going to be enforced, to be killed. That's how serious it is. Revelation 13, 12 to 15. So the second beast is the United States of America, and to form an image to the first beast, the papacy, is to have church and state unite to enforce false worship that came from the Roman church, from the Roman papal power. So what false worship came from the Roman church that will be enforced around the world? Sunday sacredness or Sunday observance or a counterfeit Sabbath came from the Roman church. Daniel 7.25, speaking about the Roman papal power and what it would do, it would think to change times and laws. What laws? The laws of the Most High in the context. That's speaking about the Ten Commandments. The only commandment that relates to time is the Sabbath commandment, the Fourth Commandment. 
the Roman Church changed the day of worship from Saturday to Sunday. The mark of the beast will be Sunday sacredness when it's enforced, and the Roman Church, because no one has the mark of the beast now, the mark of the beast is Sunday sacredness, and the Roman Church claims it is a sign of their religious authority. I repeat, no one has the mark of the beast now because it has not been enforced, but there will be a national Sunday law coming to America first and then going around the world. So the mark of the beast is Sunday sacredness, and the Roman Church claims it is a sign of their religious authority. They claim that God gave them the authority to change the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. So the whole world is going to be tested about the seventh day Sabbath. And what does the Bible say? What does the fourth commandment read? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it what? To keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your, female, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made or created the heavens and the earth the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, or made it holy. It's in the Bible. If it's in the Bible, what's in the Bible? The seventh day Sabbath. Sunday sacredness is not in the Bible. Now, we can go to church seven days a week, but there's only one day that is made holy, that God rested on it, he blessed it, and he made it holy, speaking about the seventh day Sabbath. And so don't, don't believe anything I say unless you can see it backed up with the word of God. If it's in the Bible, we want it. If it's not in the Bible, we don't want it. And so, by the way, we have a book that we would like to get into your hands. That is an e-book, though. It's the Mark of the Beast e-book. Look in the video description below, and you can click on the link, and you can get an e-book mark of the beast you don't want to miss out on that book and so the seventh day sabbath is one of the ten commandments it's the fourth commandment about how god blessed the sabbath day and he made it holy and he rested on it he blessed it he rested on it and he made it holy and he wants us to keep it holy let's go back to the screen everybody so then Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbath, as we're looking at the screen, to be a sign between them and me that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. Ezekiel 20, verse 12. Look here. So, it's very, very important to understand that the Sabbath is a sign that the Lord is sanctifying us. So, moreover, also, I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between them and me that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. Ezekiel 20 and verse 12. So the Sabbath is a sign that Jesus is making us holy. It is more than just a day. It is the seventh day Sabbath. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. That's the seventh day Sabbath. Remember, Jesus said that he's Lord of the Sabbath, Mark 2, 27 and 28. So he's Lord of the Sabbath. So the Sabbath is the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet, Revelation 1, 10. And Moses said to the people, when God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses, here's what he said. Do not fear, for God has come to test you and that his fear may be before you so that you may not sin. So God was testing God's people, whether they would obey the Ten Commandments or not. I repeat, do not fear, for God has come to test you. So the Ten Commandments are used by God to test our love for him. Remember, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14 and verse 15. So in the book of Revelation, we read again, here is a patience or the endurance or the perseverance of the saints. Here are those who keep or obey the commandments of God, the Ten Commandments, and they have what? The faith of Jesus. So it all started with a first test in the Garden of Eden, and it will all end with a final test. 
The very first test was in the Garden of Eden at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The test revolved around eating or not eating a piece of fruit. This was a reasonable test of obedience to God. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Genesis 2, 15 and 16. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Genesis 3, verse 1, verse 2 and 3. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Genesis 3, 2 and 3. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. That was the first temptation and the first fall. The first test, they failed the first test. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil, and now lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Genesis 3, 21 and 24. So that was the first test. Then there's another test I want to bring to your attention from the book of Daniel. The three Hebrew young men were tested about worship in Daniel chapter 3. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its width 6 cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar sent word to gather together the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all of the officials of the provinces gathered together for the dedication of the image that was the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and symphony with all kinds of music, all the peoples, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and noticed the issue, the issue, and this is the end time issue as well, worship. That was a key issue. And worship the gold image. Notice that the word image, because in the last days, there is a symbolic image that is set up that people worship and accept for God's faithful in the last days. And worship the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. 
they spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. Then King Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, harp, lyre, psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the fiery, from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. Notice the number seven, everybody. Notice the number seven. Um, this is very important because the number seven is also a very powerful symbolic number that conveys uh, about a test of faith, of completion, of perfection. And so they were tested. Their faith was tested. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then the king, Nebuchadnezzar, was astonished and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. What was going on there? This was a miracle. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were being tested. Their faith and obedience to God was being tested, and the issue was, worship. They refused to worship the golden image that was false worship that was being enforced by the king. That golden image was uh, false worship. And so in the last days, there's going to be false worship of worshiping the image to the beast. And that is Sunday sacredness or a counterfeit Sabbath is going to be enforced. And so the image in the last days is church and state uniting to enforce false worship. That's what the image to the beast is. It's the image to the first beast. And the first beast is the papacy. And the papacy is essentially church and state united. And so the stories of Daniel illustrate the kind of character that we need in these last days. God tested the Israelites in keeping the Sabbath in Exodus 16. 
God rained down manna every day except the seventh day Sabbath. The Israelites were to gather twice as much, uh, twice as much as manna on the preparation day before the seventh day Sabbath. So God made it very clear that the seventh day Sabbath is holy. They were not to go out and collect food on that day. So today it's wrong to buy and sell on the Sabbath. Even buying and selling a food is wrong because the Sabbath is holy and we are not to buy or sell on the seventh day Sabbath to begin sundown Friday night to sundown Saturday. Time Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. That's Daniel 12, verse 1. So Daniel's prophecies are to be understood in the context of Daniel's stories. Daniel was tested about worship in Daniel chapter 6. He refused to pray to the king. He continued to pray to the God of heaven. And it says that in Daniel chapter 6. You can read verse 10 in particular. And so he continued to worship God and pray to God morning, noon, and at night. And hence, he was thrown into the den of lions. But God sent his angels to protect Daniel in the lion's den. And he was unharmed. And he was taken out of the den of lions and he was given a promotion. God will send his holy angels to help us to pass the final test in the last days. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see a shame. That's Revelation 16 and verse 15. And so I repeat, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. James 1, 2-4. Jesus tested his disciples to see if they truly wanted to follow him in John chapter 6. He said, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. And he was talking about his word, but they didn't understand it. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying, who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, Therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it was granted, has been granted him by my Father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? And then here is what, look here everybody, here is what Peter said. Peter said, where do we go? You have the words of eternal life. And so Peter spoke up in behalf of the disciples and said, no, we're going to stay with you, Jesus. We're going to continue to follow you. Let's go back to the screen. We'll go back to the screen. Peter's love for Jesus was tested. And you remember he betrayed Jesus by denying him three times. So he failed, but then he repented and passed the test after Jesus was resurrected and appeared to the disciples by the Sea of Galilee, he said to Peter, he said, Peter, do you love me? He said, Peter, do you love me? He said that three times that question was raised. Do you love me? So that's John chapter 21. So Peter was being tempted. He was being tempted. You remember when the disciples had fished all night. Then the next morning, Jesus said to the disciples, cast your net on the right side. And their faith was being tested, but they obeyed God. They obeyed Jesus and their boat was full of fish. 
And so God had worked a miracle because they passed the test. The test was in regard to faith. Then I think about when Jesus was walking on water, Peter said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come. And Jesus said, come. And Peter walked on water. His faith was being tested, though. Would he believe Jesus' word that he could come to him? And so he was walking on water. But then he took his eyes off Jesus and he plunged into the water. And then he reached out his hand and said, Lord, save me. And Jesus was right there to save him. But Peter's faith was being tested. So our faith is tested. God tests our love for him. If you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, verse 15. Text us your name and city, and we will send you a link to a Seventh-day Sabbath-keeping church near you. Text us at 972-268-4555. We have gone to the Word of God, and we see that God tests us. He tests our faith, but we can pass those tests. And so I want to encourage you to connect with us. Reach out to us. We're here for you. If you need prayer, if you have Bible questions, just reach out to us. And the number is uh, in the description below. It's 972-268-4555. This is Mark Fox signing off for now. Remember that Jesus loves you. But before you go, let's have a word of prayer. Loving Father in heaven, I pray that you would help us to be faithful to you, dear Lord in all that we do or say, in Jesus' name, amen. Yes, Mark Fox signing off for now. Remember, we love you, and remember, Jesus died for you.